And this management agreement is going to look very similar to all of the things that we talked about in a previous section that dealt with the listing agreement. Like, where's the property? What's the description, the street address, and maybe the legal description? When does it start? When does this management agreement end? What are the responsibilities? This is the section right here that's going to point out what are the responsibilities of this general agency, where the landlord may say, okay, I want you to screen tenants, but I will pay all the bills. I want you to enter into contracts and hire lawn care, but I will, you know, whatever. And that is the section that's going to define their responsibilities and these three right here. What are the manager's responsibilities? What is the owner's responsibilities? And what authority does that manager have? He may have some reporting authority that he has to do with his client, which is the landlord. What is he going to get paid? Now, once again, it is a commission and that compensation can be paid just like a commission could be that we've talked about earlier. It could be a percentage of the money collected. It could be a flat fee. It could be some combination. It could be an hourly rate. All of these things. There's going to be a section in there that deals with the antitrust. Remember the Sherman antitrust laws. There's going to be fair housing statements and all the stuff like that. Now, if you'll notice right here, I even placed it in our notes so we wouldn't forget it. More math. Yay. So let's go in and talk about a management agreement and how they get paid in their listing commission because the calculation is slightly different on how they get paid, all right? First of all, let's go back and talk about that it could be a residential property. I could manage my friend's single family home. Or I could be managing a multi-tenant warehouse space for an investor. So don't get confused and don't forget that we are not just talking about residential here because that plays into this calculation. So let's do the easy one. The easy one is, let's say I am managing some person's residential home. My property management agreement says on residential, I collect 10% of the gross rent collected. All right. So in other words, on Lee's house, he is renting it out to a tenant who pays $1,700 a month. My management fee per month is 10%. So I get $170 and Lee gets $1,530 check written to him every month. That's Lee's portion. That's my portion. That is a very simplistic way to look at the calculation of how much I charge as a property manager. Now, in the commercial world, it may be slightly different. I charge, as an example, 4% of gross rents collected. But there are multiple tenants. So I may have one tenant paying $1,500 a month, one paying $2,400 a month, and one paying $1,600 a month. You can see here, 15, three, wait, wait, two, three, four, five. <laughs> That's $5,500 a month. And then I charge the, the 4%. I make 2,000, 
or yeah, 2,000, 202 decimals, Raymond, one, two. I am making $220 a month. That is one way to pay them. Now, we're going to get a little more in depth here, and we're going to talk about more commercial management. So in this example here, I kind of made this up as we were going along. So I want you to see that these are actually just flat fee rentals. I just made that up, but I told you they are flat fee. He pays $1,500 a month. That's what his lease would say. However, in the commercial world, it is very common to give a rental rate. And a rate is usually some unit per other unit, like miles per hour, minutes per day. So in the commercial world, we use this thing called dollars per square foot. That is a rental rate, right? It's one unit, dollars, divided by another unit, square foot. The reason they do this is so that a tenant can actually kind of compare the value of different properties, where you might have one renting out at $12 per square foot and versus one that's renting out at $14 a square foot. So obviously one is more expensive rental rate because it is a higher price. So that's how most commercials properties are based. And this is an annual number. So it's $12 per square foot per year. So let's go here and do some more math that we have done previously. But just to refresh our memory, when you have a space that a commercial tenant is going to rent out, you have to know how much is the square footage of this property. So let's say we've got a room or an office or a warehouse that we are renting out that is 25 feet by 40 feet. How many square feet are in this office space? Well, 25 times 40 is 1,000 square feet. That's how many square feet are in this space. That is crucial to know because it comes into play when we start talking about these rental rates because they are a dollar per square foot. So in essence, this property that we are talking about is $12 per square foot times 1,000 square foot is $12,000 a year in rent. Now remember, it is annual. So that number is $12,000 a year. The test is going to be tricky, and I have already done this to you one time, because a common question is, how much is the monthly rent on a property that is 1,000 square feet, where the rental rate is $12 per square feet? One of you are going to go up and do the math correctly, and go, oh, the answer is $12,000. No. Why? Because that's an annual number. The test question said, how much is my monthly rent? Divided by 12 means I pay $1,000 a month in rent. Watch for that trick, and I have warned you time and time again. So this is common to commercial worlds where they do it in a rental rate scenario. Now, when they pay a leasing agent, they will pay a leasing agent to who represents 
a tenant, which is very analogous to a buyer, right? So you, in the listing agreement, you've got a seller and a buyer. In this management agreement, you've got a guy that is representing the landlord or the lessor. And often you will have a agent that has agency with a tenant or lessee. Well, that tenant has their agent with them and the landlord will actually pay a buyer's rep. And that's what they call them, a buyer's rep. I'm sorry, it's called a tenant rep. <laughs> I was just checking to see if you were paying attention. A tenant rep. It is very analogous to a buyer's agent, okay? And that tenant rep will know how much he is getting paid just like the buyers do when there's a sale or a conveyance property and somebody's going to say, well, we're going to pay the buyer's rep 4% commission to bring a tenant to this rental property. Now, the only thing that is slightly different is the way this calculation is calculated because in the tenant scenario, remember, it is a leasehold option which is a defined period of time. So we know how long this tenant is going to be in this space. <clears throat> that tenant rep gets paid based on the entire lease value. So let's make sure we understand what the lease value is. Let's go back to the one that we just done. $12 a square foot, the tenant is going to rent a thousand square feet, but he's also going to sign a five year lease. So to calculate that value, we need to calculate the total value of the lease. So what we end up with is $12 per square foot times 1,000 square foot, and I told you that's per year, times five years. So what you end up with is a total lease value of $60,000, right? The first part of this, this, this part right here, we already did this math and got this answer, $12,000, but that is per year. I told you this guy's signing a five-year lease, so you need to multiply that annual times the number of years, and now you get a total value, and the tenant rep is making 4% of that, which is going to be $2,400 commission. That is 4% of the total five-year lease. Very common to get paid based on the total value of the lease. Now you can start to see in some of those deals that we talked about in a previous chapter, let's say on a sale leaseback, where it could be a 30 year lease. All right. Now you've got 12,000 a year times 30 years. And the tenant rep is going to get a portion of that for the leasing. The other thing is understand that some management companies actually will charge a leasing fee as well as their management fee. I told you those are two separate functions. And this is a way that some of them have found out how to actually collect double money. So when the manager finds a tenant, they may get paid separately as the leasing agent. And then every month from there on out, they get their management fee. 
Some property managers may include the function of leasing as part of the management so there's no extra number calculated in there. But that's not often. Most of the time you see them, well, I'm getting paid because there are two separate functions. There's the leasing and the management. So the first month I might make $2,400 to put them in and then I'm going to make $220 over the next 60 months. Why 60? Because it was a five year lease. Could be very lucrative to that leasing slash property manager. That is very common to have them together.